El Nino. You've probably heard the echo and the buzz about these warmer-than-average waters in the eastern Pacific, but did you know that they actually impact you here in the United States? I've got the information you need to know on your winter forecast and how El Nino plays a role. That's coming up in this video. You might be wondering why the, why the fall temperature outlook is on your screen, but the reason is I'm going to be comparing this to how winter is likely to play out this year. Now, you can see much warmer than average conditions are expected, especially in the Pacific Northwest, portions of the Four Corners in western Texas, and then heading on up into the mid-Atlantic and nor northeast, at least by my predictions. And then with your fall precipitation forecast, you can already begin to see El Nino kicking in in the southeast with higher than average precipitation, and as well along the northern tier with that below average precipitation, especially in the Pacific Northwest. I'll show you why that has to do with El Nino in just a moment, but I made this fall forecast using data from the Climate Prediction Center as well as previous guidance. The one big thing that's different between my, my fall forecast and theirs is the fact that we're looking at equal chances for below and above average temperatures across central as well as heading towards eastern parts of the country. In fall, El Nino doesn't get displayed quite as much, which is why this is possible according to the Climate Prediction Center. Now, there is a 95% chance of El Nino this winter with an abnormally strong event chance at 70%, so here's what El Nino typically does. You can see warmer than average conditions across the Pacific Northwest, dry in the Ohio Valley, and overall wet with an amplified um, subtropical jet stream there across the southern United States. So here we go, drawing those jet streams out. The polar jet stream overall staying confined to Canada with high pressure systems building in the Pacific Northwest and low pressure systems riding right along the southern and Gulf Coast of the United States. And then of course in between those areas that's where dry conditions really normally develop into portions of the Great Lakes in Ohio Valley. Here we go. This is looking at what we saw November through January over El Nino years. Um, this dates back well into the um, 1900s, so this is really good information to use. And you can see how the temperatures were well above average across northern parts of the country and well below average across southern parts of the country. And then in terms of your precipitation, right along the Gulf Coast and then up the East Coast, that's where precipitation was above average, as well as along the West Coast during that same time frame, and near to slightly below average precipitation across the northern tier of the country, which is why this, this is what you need to be watching out for this year with El Nino, because this is the pattern we're, we're getting. El Nino shows more in January to March time frame, um, and as you can see, look at how far below average these temperatures are during during these El Nino years, well below average across portions of the New Mexico region, especially over to the Carolinas, and a good bit above average here all the way from Washington over to Maine, with Maine actually being well above average. In terms of your best chances for temperature extremes with El Nino pattern, you can see in the Pacific Northwest and along the northern tier, that's where we're looking at, again, the best chance for warm extremes during winter. And across portions of the southern tier, especially in the southeast, that's where we'd look for cool extremes. This comes as the low pressure systems track further south in comparison to La Nina, which brings the chance for severe weather really on up into the mid-south and the southeast. This year, overall, severe weather is likely to be closer down towards the immediate Gulf Coast into Florida, but that's not to say some of the northerly tracking low pressure systems could not drag this into the southeast. Now, quoting Noah, a strong El Nino will shift the Pacific jet stream, leading to more winter storms over California and the southern United States. Now, why is this important? This year is a strong El Nino, so there will likely be a winter storm increase across the southern United States this year. So this does include you in Texas. This does go into the Mid-South. This does go towards the Carolinas, where lower amounts of snow may be possible in most winters. This year, you might have the chance to maybe double your amounts in some cases. Now, in terms of your seasonal temperature outlook, this is for December through February. This is a official from the Climate Prediction Center, really showing that warmth across the northern tier, but overall keeping things away from those blue cool shades across the um, southern tier. But what is there is that represents El Nino is the fact that we're going to be well above average in the precipitation department, especially here along the Gulf Coast and the southeast coast, and it encompassing all of Florida as well. And then, of course, the northern tier keeping it dry. So overall, these forecasts are following in line with El Nino, despite the fact that we're supposed to be near average as opposed to below average across the southern tier. This goes January through March. You can see a below average trend there into portions of, say, the Four Corners region. But overall, it's just the southern half of the country staying near average with above average conditions up into the Great Lakes and the northern tier. And then here we go with your seasonal um, precipitation outlook for that same time, January through March. And you can see it's looking well above average here in the southeast while keeping it below average along the northern tier. So what really looks to be displayed is the increase in storminess here along the southern tier. And that might be the most prominent thing that we see throughout winter of 2023 to 2024. So here's that likely pattern. Warmer than average here across the Pacific Northwest in much of the northern tier, but that's going to be where it's going to be most prominent there into the Mountain West and the Pacific Northwest. Keeping it stormy 
along the southern jet stream. So basically the southern half, especially the southern third of the country and dragging on up the east coast will be drier than average here in the Ohio Valley. And again, that's if you stick with a normal El Nino. But in my next winter forecast, I'll make some of my very own winter predictions. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up in a couple of weeks or so. But for now, go ahead and like and subscribe. I cover short term, long range, severe weather, tropical weather and winter weather here on the channel. So everything you need to know to stay safe.